On April 8th, a total solar eclipse will cross North America. A total solar eclipse happens when the moon passes between the sun and earth and blocks the face of the sun. The sky will darken as if it were dawn or dusk. It's pretty cool. If you haven't seen one, mark uh, April 8th on your calendar because there won't be another total solar eclipse for another 20 years until 2044. Wow. Joining us this morning to continue the conversation is eclipse science writer and expert David Barron. David, good morning to you. Good morning, thanks for having me on. Thanks for being with us from Colorado this morning. So you have witnessed eight total solar eclipses across the globe. Talk with us about your experiences and really why people should experience this as well. It's pretty cool. Absolutely, well, I'm fanatical about it. So I've, I actually, last April, went to Australia, the far corner of Australia in the middle of nowhere, to see a total solar eclipse that lasted 56 seconds. Oh, wow. And it was worth it. A total solar eclipse is, to my mind, the closest thing to space travel that you can experience without leaving the surface of the Earth. It's an otherworldly experience. And probably a lot of your viewers experienced this in 2017. If, you, if they drove down to Oregon, in 2017, that's where the, the total solar eclipse passed. This year on April 8th, you're gonna have to go farther. It'll be a partial eclipse in Seattle, and I'm happy to talk about that, but to see the total eclipse, you've gotta get along a path that goes from Texas to Maine. Mm. Uh, okay, we gotta start looking at flights, Booking Steve. Those trips, yep. <laughs> okay, David, let's go back in time. You wrote the book, American Eclipse, the nation's epic race to catch the shadow of the moon and win the glory of the world. It takes a look at the total solar eclipse of 1878. Can you talk with us about that journey, writing that book, and also the eclipse? What did we learn from it? Absolutely. So uh, in 1878, a total solar eclipse crossed the Wild West. It went down the spine of the Rockies from Montana Territory to Texas. And this was at a time when the United States was not taken very seriously as an intellectual nation. The Europeans looked down their noses at us. Um, but this was an attempt for America to show what it could do in science because total eclipses back in the 19th century were really important for astronomy. There were fundamental questions about the sun and solar system. No one knew what the sun was made of or what fueled its fires. And this total solar eclipse was a chance to answer some of those questions. So dozens of the era's great scientists flocked out to the Wild West. Uh, Thomas Edison, who was just 31 years old at the time, he went to Wyoming for the eclipse to do an experiment. There was an all-female expedition from Vassar College that went to Denver in 1878 to show what women could do in science. It was just, it was a remarkable day uh, a chance for America to take on the world and a chance for these characters that I write about, these real people, uh, to show what they could do. So I had great fun uh, telling this historical tale, which is relevant today because back in 1878, people were just as excited about total eclipses as they are today. And I tell you, on by April 8th, everyone's going to be talking about the solar eclipse. Hmm. Hey, uh, David, I love your passion about this. So we were just talking a moment ago about you know, ways that you can see this uh, eclipse when it happens on April 8th. For those that are interested, how can people watch at least the partial solar eclipse here in Washington? And what do they need to know to prepare and stay safe? We need those funky goggle glass things again. Exactly, you'll, you'll really wanna get uh, eclipse glasses like these, which uh, are so dark, I can't see anything through them. Uh, <laughs> but they're, what you can see through them is the sun. Um, I would get them now. You may still have some from 2017 if you had them then for the, in that last uh, solar eclipse. But uh, you can get them online. You can get them at uh, libraries. Some libraries are giving them away, hardware stores. Uh, and if you go to my website, which is American-Eclipse.com, I have a page all about the 2024 eclipse with information on how to view and places you can go to get the glasses. So in Seattle... It'll be, uh, again, it's April 8th. It's a Monday, Monday morning when it happens. It'll reach its peak at about 1130 in the morning. And if you have eclipse glasses like these, um, you'll watch as the moon crosses in front of the sun and turns the sun into a crescent. So it'll look sort of like a crescent moon. Mm. And that will be very interesting. So make sure you go out and see it. But that is fundamentally different from the experience you'll have if you decide to take the kids out of school, take the day off, and go on a road trip 
to the path of totality, as it's called, from Texas to Maine, because there, during all of four and a half minutes or so, you'll actually have the sun completely block the sun, uh, the, the, the moon completely block the sun, and day will suddenly turn into twilight. And during the total eclipse, now again, this isn't true in Seattle, but if you're in Dallas or Indianapolis or Cleveland, during the total eclipse, you can take these glasses off and see what you're seeing right now on your screen, which is the solar corona. That's the sun's outer atmosphere. And as interesting as that picture looks, it's so much more dazzling to see with the naked eye. It's the most beautiful thing you've ever seen in the sky. And on April 8th, there will be five planets visible in the sky, too. So you'll see the planets and the sun together. <laughs> it's like you've left Earth and you're on another planet looking back at our solar system. It's, uh, again, it's very brief, but it's so unlike anything else you've ever experienced. Everyone should experience total eclipse at least one time in their life. Well, mm. hey, you have persuaded me. I right? just got chills from that description. <laughs> Thank you so much, David. That's going to be awesome. My pleasure.